partially inevitable that the idea of enlightenment is going to be a huge answer to all your problems, the reason for suffering, the reason why this is so hard. You know, in a way, to a degree, that's unavoidable. Because the sense that feels like it's not this, that is a huge ant. Come on. It can't help but put its hopes and dreams onto something. So it's innocently doing that, automatically, really. But yeah, that was part of the heartbreak here. Letting go of the idea that Something's going to save you. Because really, what seems to happen is the one that felt like it didn't need saving and the one that felt like it did need saving at times, you know how it just goes up and down? Sometimes it feels perfectly fine. It feels on top of the world. And then sometimes it just feels like it just hit rock bottom. So the sense that doesn't need it and needs it, that sense dissolves. you're left with nothing <laughs> everything you dreamed for you're left empty handed because there was never any need for anything You actually never needed saving. And you know, the joke of it all is that when that sense of separation or an individual is actually dissolving, that very need for something else, when it's dissolving it triggers that sense of needing saving of deep insecurity of absolute raw vulnerability everything that didn't want to be felt did that make sense? Everything that was like avoided Because really all we're really afraid of is Sensations really uncomfortable sensations. That's what we're avoiding We're avoiding rejection. We're avoiding hatred. We're avoiding anger sadness despair
so it's possible it'll vary for everybody so always take these words with a grain of salt but it could be likely that you will be faced with some of those because that's what's been avoided that's what that sense that said this isn't it was avoiding and you know that sense didn't start out that way most probably but over apparent time it intensifies and then it really avoids discomfort because to be frank it is uncomfortable especially in the beginning if you haven't been used to or practicing feeling in the body feeling the discomfort then it's immensely discomfort it, uncomfortable in the beginning you know I used to think that I was really in touch with my feelings because I would talk to my sister often I would I would tell her pretty much everything and I thought it was pretty okay with crying and things like that. But when I really became present in the body, when I really consciously brought the attention into the body, right straight in the center of the discomfort, and I was fully with it, was willing to be with it there was a willingness to be with it it was challenging in the beginning and it's very nice to have support because sometimes it can feel scary because it's like unknown territory be fearful and it can be really nice to have the support of another nervous system that's so-called stronger in the sense that it's felt through pretty much everything it's felt through the death of itself it's felt through it felt through the fear the absolute fear of existence It took me months to feel through a lot of different layers of unconscious sensations that were buried there in the body. What seems to happen is that we, we're operating on the surface level the conscious level where we're able to on the surface level just understand what's happening put labels to things conceptualize it understand it but if we don't feel through this surface level of discomfort whatever it might be sadness or anger if we're not with it, then we're always just operating on this level. So when we feel through the discomfort, the energy is released. And then you could function from here. A so-called deeper level, it's not really deeper. You're just unraveling the so-called energetic layers that were accumulated.
some teachers like to call that karma, but that does not resonate here. It just seems like within the story, certain things were innocently and automatically suppressed. So energetically, it's in the body. And it just needs to be met with some kindness, with some gentleness, with some kind words, with some presence, with some attention. You're basically nurturing it to freedom, to release on its own, in its own time, not to get rid of it. You're like unraveling your life, seeing it in reverse. Sometimes it can feel like it's in different areas in the body. Perhaps in the stomach, in the heart, in the throat, and so on. I don't know if you can hear that, but I don't know what's going on there. They're testing something. 